My name is Kyle Rector. I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors from the University of Iowa about designing mobile tasks to improve art description accessibility for people with visual impairments. People with visual impairments face barriers to accessing art museums, including that lack, there's a lack of museums with accommodations for them, and often when there are, you need to schedule a tour ahead of time, which doesn't allow for spontaneous visitation. Technology has been used to make museum spaces accessible, but it's not widespread and it um, requires experts to compose the artwork descriptions. So audio guides are costly in terms of staff time and money, and they may not conform to best practices as established by the Art Beyond site or ABS accessibility guidelines. So to tackle this problem, we had a couple of research questions that we wanted to look at. So how do we carry audio guide worthy content without the need for expert composition? And specifically, how can we guide lay people in composing accessible artwork descriptions so we aren't having to rely on experts? So we conducted a study that had multiple phases with multiple stakeholders. First, we created tasks for patrons to write artwork descriptions, and we had two different approaches we explored. One was our baseline approach with four tasks inspired by human computer interaction research. So taking examples from research that's already published. And then we had our art beyond site approach, which were four design tasks inspired by the established ABS accessibility guidelines. The docents evaluated art descriptions that we curated per the ABS accessibility guidelines and people with visual impairments evaluated the descriptions on how well it helped them understand the artwork's contents. We chose eight selected artworks. Um, these are all from the public domain, devoid of controversial content and nudity, and these are from the University of Iowa Museum of Art. And we developed tasks using the artworks and some information. So example here is a picture with um, Agnes Weinrich still life sunflowers and it has the year and the medium and how it was got um, acquired. And then we have the task like write words or short phrases reflecting on the work of art displayed above. You may write as many as desired separate using commas. And this was one of the baseline approaches that we sent to work or, uh, mechanical Turk workers. We had four different tasks, though so words and phrases is one of them, but we also had people select tags from commonly used words in the museum space and also custom terms, selecting emotions that may apply, or composing a story about the artwork. To curate these baseline descriptions, we made each task a small Qualtric survey and recruited respondents through Amazon's Mechanical Turk, which is a workplace where people can work for small amounts of money um, but they are anonymous. And we collected 160 descriptions from 132 mechanical turkers to ensure we had coverage of all the tasks and artworks. Um, the majority of these mechanical turkers self-reported as not museum employees or artists. So we are trying to get, for, get to lay people. And we had docents rate these baseline descriptions that were curated from the mechanical turkers. So we recruited four docents all were female, ages 30 to 62, with six to 28 years of experience. They rated each description that the mechanical turkers produced on adherence to each of the seven ABS accessibility guidelines on a five point Likert scale, where one was poor and five was the best. And it was incredibly low. So only 0.27% of the ratings that we got were at least rated a four out of five. So it was very low quality and we realized we had to do more work to prove the accessibility descriptions. So then we developed uh, ABS approach tasks and this was with researchers in human computer interaction and a researcher in museum accessibility specifically. And so for the same artwork, we have a task that talked about senses. So imagine you are in the painting above. How would you describe your surroundings using touch, taste, smell, or sound to get at some more sensory experiences that someone might understand? And in addition to the census task, which is at the bottom, we also had what were general, literal, and reenact. So we had people tap on the screen the most prominent elements, three most, and write a description. For the general, for literal, we have them write a literal description that does not include emotion or opinion. And for reenact, we have them imagine that you had to describe a selected pose, um, an element using a human pose or movement if there was a figure in the artwork. 
Um, so we curated the Art Beyond site descriptions in the same method that we recruited the baseline descriptions. We allowed for people to tap and outline around the objects and the artwork that they were going to describe with using a Qualtrics heat map question type. So we were able to record the locations of the dots. And we collected, um, in this case, 140 descriptions from 98 mechanical Turk workers. The reason it's fewer is because only half the artworks had a figure that could be described for a reenactment. And so some paintings didn't apply. The majority self-reported as not museum employees or artists, just like last time. So we conducted a docent ratings comparison. We recruited the same four docents as before, but they took a three month break between the first half of the research and the second half of the research to avoid recalling the artworks or the descriptions. So they came in with a fresh mind. And what we found overall is that the art beyond site descriptions outperformed the baseline descriptions in terms of all seven guidelines. And these differences were statistically significant. So to give an example uh, description from the Art Beyond Site Guidelines, where both docents rated it a four out of five, we have the artwork on the right. And so to read it, on the bottom left, there is a woman lying down in a grouse field wearing a black dress. Her left arm is tucked underneath her body, propping her up off the ground. She's also wearing a black hat that has a white ribbon tight, wrapped around it. You cannot see her face, because she is looking towards the city, so you're seeing the back of her. On the right side, there is a woman wearing a white dress with polka dots in the same field as the other woman. She is standing instead of lying down. The dress has long sleeves and her hair is styled. She is also wearing a small black hat with a red ribbon. Her hair is a light brown color and her skin is fair. On the bottom center, in between these two women is a little girl that is seated. She is wearing a red-orange dress with a white hat on. You cannot see her face because she is turned away from you. So this, combined with other descriptions curated with other mechanical Turk workers, allowed for um, the artwork to come in live and become very descriptive so you can follow along with what's happening in the artwork, where those three prominent figures in the front are very clearly described. But the overall setting is also described. So we also worked with participants with visual impairments. Um, we conducted a survey with 31 participants, nine males, 22 females. Their ages ranged from 19 to 68. Five were artists, 23 were not artists, and three um, did not specify. They represented a diversity of blindness, low vision, and vision loss, where uh, several of them were in all three groups of the vision classification, some were congenitally blind or low vision or had vision loss and others had experienced it later in life. So we presented the baseline and art beyond sight descriptions together unidentified. So in other words, uh, when participants were going through the survey, they had the artwork, the information about it, the most basic, and then they either saw the descriptions of art beyond sight completely combined or they saw descriptions of just the baseline completely combined. And it was half the times that they saw the art beyond site description first for an artwork and half the times they saw the baseline description first for an artwork to avoid any sort of ordering effects. Now, when they did the survey, they were given these instructions on a scale of one to five, where one is strongly disagree to five is strongly agree. Right? how much you agree with the following statement. I'm able to understand most elements or objects of this artwork from the provided descriptions. So our goal is to really get a sense of the understandability of the artwork. And after they gave that rating, we asked them to write one sentence explaining the rating that they selected in the previous question so we could get some more sense of what happened. So we did a quantitative comparison of the Likert responses. Um, we used a linear mixed model that controlled for differences in artwork and participant demographics. And what we found is that the approach, which was either the art beyond sight or the baseline, had an influence on the ratings, and that was statistically significant. And when we look descriptively, uh, people with visual impairments gave higher ratings when responding to descriptions from the art beyond sight approach, where the average was near four out of five, 
than descriptions generated from the baseline approach, which was closer to an average of three out of five. So we found that it was more, uh, more beneficial. We also did a qualitative analysis where two of the authors looked at all the statements written by the people with visual impairments and uh, they, we uh, came up with codes that applied to the statements and wrote them all the way down uh, from top to bottom, looking at all the statements. And then we came back together and discussed all disagreements until we completely agreed on uh, the codes. And at a high level, what we found is that people with visual impairments had more negative than positive comments about the baseline approach descriptions for various reasons, um, but often they were missing details. We did find, however, that the baseline story task, where we asked them verbatim to compose a story about the artwork, did the best because people could be more expressive in their storytelling than in the other tasks that were about emotions or tags, words and phrases. Also, people with visual impairments had more positive than negative comments about the art beyond site approach descriptions. So one example theme about why the baseline approach did not do as well as the art beyond site approach is that the baseline approach descriptions were not vivid. So talking about the artwork on the right, the person said, I have no idea on what the bird is doing or what the scenery looks like outside of the fact that there seems to be some kind of lake involved. So they were missing information about how the bird was posing, which could be helped with reenact. They're also missing details about the grass and the ground, and just the fact that a lot of the background is actually not of the lake, but the air. Uh, another example theme, the Art Beyond Sight Approach descriptions orient the reader. So this was one thing that was beneficial about the Art Beyond Sight descriptions. So the details at the beginning were very helpful as I was able to understand the layout of the painting, which helped me visualize how a sighted person would see it. So with that example earlier where I read about the three different figures in the artwork, those came at the beginning for them when they um, looked at the Art Beyond Sight descriptions to understand more about the artwork. And having that sort of sense of orientation is really important. So in summary, uh, we were designing mobile tasks to improve art description accessibility for people with visual impairments. So at a high level, we created tasks for patrons to write artwork descriptions based on previous human computer interaction research that's already been published. We just emulated it to the best of our ability and the Art Beyond Sight accessibility guidelines. And we chose to do this approach because we were first curious to see how well the prior literature out there would suffice in terms of generating accessible descriptions. But we found from our brief exploration that as a baseline for what's already out there in terms of curating textual descriptions, it wasn't good enough. So then our team decided to design a set of tasks that uh, pertain to the ABS accessibility guidelines. Docents and people with visual impairments rated the Art Beyond Sight approach descriptions higher, and we uncovered new themes from people with visual impairments about what makes the artwork descriptions helpful. And I encourage more looking at the paper because there's a lot more details than I have here. And finally, we demonstrated that carefully constructed prompts can elicit adequate art descriptions from lay people. And so we hope this work will generalize to future work where stuff is actually done in the museum space, where we can actually test out, test out this approach with mobile devices and see how well the descriptions uh, come from actual people in the museum. So I thank you all for your time. Lastly, I want to uh, give quick graphics acknowledgments to the artist who had completed the graphics that I used in my talk. Thank you all for listening and appreciate any questions via email or live. Thanks so much.